Howdy folks, welcome back. Just taking the opportunity for uh, taking the Tuono out on a cold but sunny November morning. Just try and get a few miles on it. Breaking my own rule of never riding in all late autumn winter, but hey, what the hell. Visor keeps fogging up. I'm hoping you can hear this. I'm trying a new microphone position today. Steady on old chap. And uh, I'm hoping it'll, it's translating well to the footage so you're not getting quite as much lip smack and uh, breath off me. Anyway, uh, yes, it's uh, very nice out in the Tuono today. I'm still getting used to it. I've, only, I've still done less than 100 miles on it. And uh, generally, yeah, I'm loving this bike. It's not all perfect though. I'll, you know, for example, I don't particularly like the low speed fueling on it. It uh, really, really, really doesn't like going slow, this bike. It chugs a bit. As you can see, you know, I mean, the second gear there, that really should be a bit smoother, but I think it's just the fact that it's holding so much power back. I'm still only in road map. Well, that kind of takes me nicely onto the uh, topic of today. I don't really want to talk about the bike so much today because I've, I'm well documented on that so far and I, I haven't ridden it enough to give it a review or anything, so I'll leave that to, to later. But for now, this is uh, what, what, what I want to talk about is uh, the sort of horsepower arms race with motorbikes. Now, I, I may come across a little bit hypocritical here, because here I am sat on a motorcycle that can theoretically at the crank generate 170 horsepower which will probably work out to the sort of low 160s at the back wheel but it's still a hell of a lot of uh, power and if you wanted that sort of power to weight in a car in this day and age you're basically buying a Bugatti Veyron which you can't because they're all sold and they're millions of pounds whereas this is less than uh, less than 14,000 pounds UK and will give you the power sort of acceleration of a Bugatti Veyron, probably more. But anyway, I'm sure I'll get a lot of people saying, eh, eh, the Bugatti Veyron this, the Bugatti Veyron that. I don't care, this is about motorbikes. Go and watch a, uh, a motor car vlog if that be your thing. But anyway, uh, I'm, a, I'm aware that at the moment there is a an air sats de facto gentleman's agreement with the big ma bike manufacturers not to exceed 200 horsepower for road bikes which uh, is a hell of a lot of power but I remember, I'm old enough to remember a similar agreement back in the 80s, early 90s where they all had a gentleman's agreement for uh, 100 brake horsepower and uh, well we've well exceeded that these days now powerful motorbikes i often wonder where it's going to end up because this bike probably and more than likely will be the uh, high water mark of performance for me certainly in terms of power anyway because this has more power than you can use on the road, but on the public roads anyway. On a track I'm sure it's, it's absolutely supreme, but on a public road, 170 horsepower is it's probably a little bit too much really. I mean I'm here pootling long in fourth gear doing 40 mph and I can feel the bike really really wanting to do more. I'm not prepared to do more on it today because as you can see the road is very wet it's also covered in uh, late November leaf mould which is basically might as well just pour diesel all over the road for this sort of road adhesion it gives you so that's why I'm still in uh, high traction control and I'm still on the road map at uh, the road power map I always get a bit lush on there to bear with me I've come a different way than I like to normally the plan is today to go for a ride up to uh, Devil's Bridge in southern Cumbria which is a bit of a biker's gathering spot and I'm going to go there through the trough of Boland which is a particularly beautiful part of uh, Lancashire in the UK 
you know, this, this, it's beautiful all year round here. It's really, really good for road riding on my push bike. So I'll probably do a, a bit of a road ride around here in a couple of weeks when it's uh, no good for motorbikes anymore. But anyway, back, back to the point. Is I, I was going on about uh, the sort of usability of horsepower on motorcycles on the road in the UK. Other countries may be different, but in the UK, all your roads are kind of like, you know, all the good back roads, they're all like this, they're all uh, little little farm roads, well, roads with farms on them, which the surfaces are not that good, they're a bit potholy, and uh, they go through a lot of these little villages with 30 miles an hour speed limits on them. Now, I obey the 30 miles an hour speed limit generally because apart from a few exceptions it's kind of makes sense why it's 30 miles an hour it should be lower in some places and uh, you know and i think every biker on the road is an ambassador for motorcycling and we get so much bad press that any little thing that can hurt us hurts us a lot and motor motorcyclists screaming through little villages in uh, middle England does not do anyone any good because these people are all voters these people are the kind of people that will vote for a government that tries to restrict motorcycle usage I mean years ago they're going about fitting mandatory leg protectors and all that and that was trying to get through Parliament but never worked that would have been a disaster but anyway so where do we go with horsepower? Personally, I think that no one really, really, you know, if you think about it sensibly and logically, no one needs more than 100 horsepower on a motorcycle. I mean, you're getting that now out of 600cc bikes. I remember when that, you know, 100 horsepower was the reserve of the uh, 1200cc motorbike, things like that. But no, they, these days, these Super Sport 600s, they're, they're capable of doing in excess of 150 miles an hour, 100 horsepower, and they handle and brake and do all, everything that uh, thousands used to do years ago. So, I mean, this, as I was saying earlier, this is a high watermark in terms of power for me. But I didn't buy this bike for its power, I bought it for its handling and its, uh, its looks, its brakes, its electronics packages. Oh, the service the road, oh, oh this will be nice in summer. Look forward to that. Yeah, so I didn't buy this bike because it's 170 brake horsepower. I bought it because it's a sweet handling, gorgeous looking Italian motorbike with a sweet V4 engine that sounds the business. So I, I just do get a little bit worried that people are now buying these sports bikes which have all this power which years ago you would have only found that kind of power on the uh, Motor GP track and now, uh, you know, Billy Bloggs can go out with his full motorbike license as long as he can pay for the bike and pay for insurance he can ride it on the road and I've been watching a, a guy on YouTube uh, I think he's called something like uh, Ricky Mouse or something like that. He basically he doesn't ride, all he does he sits on there's a highway in California, a really famous one that uh, everyone uh, rides up and it's a particular set of two mile stretch of fens that are absolutely gorgeous uh, motorcycle roads and he like videos people riding along on him and more often than not there's people falling off and you, you, it's usually guys on R1s, GSXRs, things like that who don't really know how to ride these things cranking them over in corners, getting the weight distribution and the braking all wrong and they end up uh, high siding, low siding and most of the time it's just front wheel washouts because they, they don't know how to do it you know, these people cause accidents and it looks bad for all of us. So I don't know, but that's not necessarily a power thing, that's just people who can't ride a bike. So I've not really got a point as to what I'm getting at here, I'm just being slightly hypocritical, saying that uh, motorbikes are getting a little bit too powerful today. 
saying that though, I'm a 40 odd year old bloke and I ride this like my grandmother would, you know. <laughs> You're not going to be seeing me wheelie in this thing. You're not going to be seeing me uh, chin on the tank doing... Uh, oh, that going to neutral, that's hard. Uh, you know, chin on the tank doing 160 odd miles an hour. Nah. But what you might see me is uh, leaning it out on corners a bit when the weather's nice. You know, and uh, getting the old knee down on roundabouts, things like that. Yeah, I don't know what everyone else thinks about the uh, arms race, especially with the uh, emergence of Kawasaki's H2R, which I know is a road, uh, sorry, which I know is a track bike, but that thing's knocking out 300 horsepower. And it's got a road version, which is the same bike, just with its power turned down a bit, probably with, and it's a supercharged bike, so they, they probably like to turn the power down at the supercharger, fitted a smaller blower on it or something like that. But what it's doing is, it's setting the benchmark again for the future. You know, that in the future, all with a simple turn of a screw, that bike will do 230, 240 brake off power with absolutely no adverse effects to the bike and you'll have people going out doing that kind of worry a bit about it but not so much that I'll lose any sleep just a bit of a topic for a vlog so tell me what you think are motorbikes getting too powerful? like me, do you think that uh, no one needs anything more powerful than a 600 and anything more is kind of just showing off really? No, I don't show off, it's not about the power like I said, it's mainly about the look and the sound, it's beautiful. So anyway, let me know what you think, let us know what you reckon to uh, the shape of a uh, powerful motorcycle today in the uh, not still early 21st century. Well, I'll just continue on my little Sunday ride, the roads start to dry off a bit now. So I might risk putting it in uh, sport mode once I can get past this LDV. Get a bit of clear road ahead of me. Yeah, the road's starting to dry up a bit, which is nice. And uh, I might do a little, another little, uh, few little clips riding into Devil's Bridge. But I think I've uh, exhausted myself on this particular topic. So, ah, you're going. Ah, nice one. Excellent. Now these roads are just, they're not good in winter, I can just even, I can just feel my front wheels skittering about all over the place. Nah, I'm going to take it easy, don't want to stack up the new bike, that would be terrible. So, as always, feel free to like, comment and subscribe to this game on his wheels. And I'll catch you later. That's all.